Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We're welcoming back to the show Diana Stevens, who's the founder and CEO of Mindful Job Alignment. And I'm proud to say and announce um, a new author in our best selling business leaders book series. So, first off, hey, Diana, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be back. Oh my gosh! So we've been we've been working on this uh, book project for quite some time now, yes. and it's so much fun to finally have the book out to be promoting to obviously bring you back on the show. Um, and I guess just to start this off, we're gonna we got a lot to unpack and a lot to uncover today. But we'll we'll start this episode the way that we start them all sure. with our Mission Matters minute. So Diana, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Diana, what mission matters to you? Well, what really matters to me, Adam, is that people, when they're in a career transition, either making that decision to make a transition from a job they're in or that they find themselves unexpectedly out of work, it's hmm. to really help them and reassure them that that process does not have to devastate them and hurt them, that there is emotional support and help uh, for those transitional periods in their life. And uh, it's really a passion project for me. So I'm very glad to be here. Oh, it's amazing and, and great having you back. And uh, I guess just to get this kicked off, I don't want to assume that maybe some of our, our newer listeners or viewers caught some of the previous work we've done together. So sure. how, did, how did this concept of um, mindful job alignment, how did all that evolve? Well, it, it really evolved a lot from my personal story. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in the, in the career workforce for a number of years and had a number of different positions with some Fortune 500 companies in sales and uh, was in a, an unfortunate situation that between the years of 2004 and 2014, mm. I was downsized five times. Wow. And um, either through divisions going out of business, companies going out of business or positions being eliminated. So mm. through that time, I had outplacement actually three times. And I found that very, very helpful for uh, meeting new people and all of the tactical steps of job search, such as resume writing and networking and interviewing and yeah. putting together a job search action plan. Um, but the emotional side was was a little bit um, lacking. Mm. So I, I moved ahead. And in 2019, as part of a, uh, I always wanted to get my PhD. And um, I started my PhD in holistic coaching. And then in 2020, uh, really, the COVID uh, pandemic really kind of spawned this to push ahead to finish my dissertation. Mm. And I um, completed my dissertation called The Mindful Approach to Job Search, where I broke down the job search into about eight different areas, mainly that deal with internal emotional subjects and mm. helping to feel better. Uh, and some some other activities that would provide solace. Mm -hmm. So um, I received my PhD in 2021 and uh, then have been moving forward with creating content and uh, was very, very excited when your book opportunity came along because I thought, let's start at the beginning yeah. with this understanding the grief caused by these transitions and what we can do to overcome that grief and start putting a plan together to move forward because these really are life transitions. And sometimes these transitions can occur when you, when other things are happening in one's life. Uh, in my particular situation, I had a 16 year ordeal with my mother. She had Alzheimer's. I also had a personal health challenge during that time. And not to mention what happens during transition is that there's a tremendous financial consequence hmm. that occurs. Uh, and especially as people are younger, um, you need those jobs for medical benefits, and then you want to keep contributing to your retirement plan. So it is it is a challenging time. Yeah. And so a lot a lot of different things that you could have written about. And you said you mentioned you wanted to kind of start at the beginning. So the name of your chapter, the title, Understanding the Grief Caused by Career Transitions. Uh, can you tell us just to go a little bit further into why this subject was important and why now? Well, it really is, um, you know, job loss does rank up in the top 10 of life mm. stressors right there with death of a loved one mm. and divorce. 
And um, people really need to understand what they're going through and they need to pause for a moment, understand that this is a life changing event and mm -hmm. take some time to process that internally. Uh, because by processing that and working through the five steps of grief and uh, really taking time to reconcile what went on and what they want to do and just to take mm -hmm. some time, it's really about slowing down and really being alone, going inward and taking a look at where am I at, where do I want to go, is very, very helpful. And it's almost a little bit, he it's healing and it's medicinal, actually. Yeah. Um, I find that too many people tend to rush back into the job search because of the fact that, of course, they need the money and they panic and they have family situations where they need to have a consistent cash flow. Mm -hmm. But there is the aspect that if you don't reconcile what has happened and put it into perspective, that you could potentially be carrying negative thoughts and feelings into the networking, into the job interview, and mm -hmm. maybe even into the next job when you're hired. So there's a piece about completing what has happened, working from a blank slate, and then moving forward positively. Mm -hmm. So um, just digging a little bit further into the book. So just I'll read off I'll read off a couple of these and for the for the viewers and audience just know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna tackle a couple of these, but uh, we're not gonna go through it all because hey, pick up a copy of the book if you want it all, read it in the right. book. It's all there. Right, right, right. exactly. <laughs> uh, but let me let me read off a couple of these though. So um transitions are not one size fits all, uh, life disruptors versus life quakes. Um, job loss and transitions, spiritual changes and awareness, seven types of loss. So I want to start with this concept of life disruptors versus life quakes. So sure. tell us a little bit more about that. Well, this comes from the work uh, that Bruce Feiler has done in his book, Life is in the Transitions. And he has a very interesting concept about defining events that happen in one's life. Now, mm -hmm. a disruptor is something that could be a job loss. It could be, in some cases, a divorce, where it disrupts, it, it could even be the birth of a new child, mm -hmm. where it disrupts the everyday flow of life, but eventually mm -hmm. everybody kind of realigns themselves in their lifestyle and they move forward. Yeah. A life quake is much, much more of a life-jarring disruptive event, and it changes mm -hmm. one's life forever. So in some cases, uh, a death of a spouse, a divorce, a serious accident, a serious illness diagnosis, something like that, where mm -hmm. your life is completely permanently altered and you have to move on. And sometimes these are enforced changes. Sometimes these happen over time. But mm -hmm. it's a really interesting distinction. And I think that it's, it's applied to the job search because for some people, um, a, this could be a life quake, especially if they're yeah. a major breadwinner and they need to land quickly, you know, that type of a thing. A disruptor, yeah. you can you can adjust and, and keep moving on. So I thought that was a very interesting concept. And I hadn't really seen that before until earlier this year. So um, I think it's an important concept to think about. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, and what I feel like is and one of the big things I like about what I what you wrote is that as I read these things, it kind of humanizes some of these changes that we go through, because as you mentioned in the beginning of this, you said, OK, um, you know, you in your personal story, in your personal situation, maybe you'd gotten some technical aspects of it. And so it's almost like, OK, the technical side's good. But what about the other side? Like, what about the healing side? What about like the trauma of it? What about and so by you applying these other things that are accepted in terms of grief to this transition in terms of um, job searches and things like that, when you're downsized and all these other things like to me. It lets me know. And I was like, like, oh, I could look back at times in my life where I'd be like, oh, like I wasn't the only one at that time. I was like feeling like, oh, my gosh, this is the you know, end of the world. Like, especially when you're young, when especially oh, yes. when you're really young and you maybe have not I shouldn't stereotype. Maybe other young people deal with things differently. But when I was young, I was like, oh, my gosh, the sky is falling. <laughs> I'm like this. Uh, will there ever be another whatever it was? Right. So it really humanizes this all right. Yes. It is a very human issue. I mean, and it's out there all over the place mm -hmm. and it will consistently happen. Mm -hmm. the, the days of, I think in, in our workforce nowadays, the days of working of mm -hmm. working in one career for mm -hmm. 35 plus years and getting that gold clock or gold watch at your yeah. retirement party, uh, those those days are not around. I've, I've, I read that the average tenure in the job 
Mm -hmm. tenure nowadays is about three and a half years. Mm. So uh, it, people have to be mindful on both sides, companies yeah. and employees, um, and make the most of the time and and keep a plan out there. Keep mm -hmm. keep active in who whatever industry people are in. Publish yeah. articles. Be a thought leader. Do whatever you can to learn additional skills to be enhancing mm -hmm. yourself. That all helps keep things stable. Mm. You also write about um, spiritual changes and awareness. So as we talk about like this, what, what was your goal for the reader in this section? I think my goal was for people to take a look at the spiritual side of this, because there, when you take a look at different people, okay, you, know, you right. might know different people in your life. You might even have relatives that have never, ever gone through this. Why do some people go through this and, and multiple times and other yeah. people never go through this? And I do think there is a spiritual aspect to that about mm. calling and purpose that yeah. perhaps when we are not in our right livelihood, we are then called sometimes in a jarring manner mm. to make a transition into something new. Mm -hmm. And I just read an interesting article on that online uh, earlier this week about that, that as you start to ignore the signs that come, mm -hmm. the signs that will keep coming will become more and more jarring. Mm -hmm. And then eventually a crisis erupts. Mm -hmm. So it's about being mindful and being conscious to what's going on. And that's something that takes a little bit of a muscle to develop because I think in our busy lives nowadays, everyone is so busy rushing yeah. around, just doing the basic tasks and whatnot, that the idea of deep introspection and spirituality is not always there. And I'm, I'm a big advocate for putting structures in place and practices yeah. that one can relate to in place. Any tips, like like when you talk about structures, like I'm just, uh, any tips or thoughts on like how to do that? If somebody's watching this and they're like, "Hey, like, well, I don't, I'm not the best at this. Like, what? How can I get better?" Well, I have actually an eight part process, which I won't go into the whole process here because I want people to read more of the book and, and check right. out my website. But I think one of the the first thing we've been talking about is processing the transition, mm -hmm. and then the second piece of that is really taking time to create space in your home or maybe have a have a favorite place outside that you can go be alone mm -hmm. contemplate and meditate and just mm -hmm. think about what is going on what do you want take take maybe a small journal to take mm -hmm. some notes about what you want to do and what you want to do next that's that's part of that i also mm -hmm. recommend uh gratitude journaling on a daily basis because oh yeah you know, believe it or not, even when you're in the middle of a job crisis, you can be very, very thankful for the roof over your head, the food you're eating, and um, the clothes on your back. Hmm. So, it, and I hate to break it down all the way to that level. I break it down to that level. Yeah, I'll tell you, Diana, I will wake up and I'm, and I, I, that's one of my big practices. I can't claim I have many practices. I, I fall off the, well, the wagon and I, you know, right. start something, stop it. I'm human. But that one, I'm like, I woke up, I'm breathing. My lungs are filling with air or whatever. And I, yeah. I'm in, like, I'm in. I get, I start at the very, very basic and go from there. Right. <laughs> And it's important. And I think it's important because um, I've known some people who this has hit very, very hard and they didn't yeah. have a place to live for a while. So um, gratitude is very, very important. I think spiritual reading is also very important, whatever that means to someone. I mm -hmm. read a mix of, of, of things. Uh, and, and a lot, I happen to like Eastern philosophies a lot. I think they're very simple, easy yeah. to understand. There's a lot of books uh, out there on self-help and things like that that people can read as well. And there's another piece to this that I think mm -hmm. is, is, is very important for people is to think about incremental income. How mm. can you get in some incremental income while you're in transition? Do you yeah. have a hobby you can monetize? Do you have a talent? Anyone who speaks a second language or third language fluently, you have a mm -hmm. built-in one right there with interpreting. And my mm. point on this is I think if you keep busy, you keep out into the community and you keep going, it tends, number one, it lessens the stress. And yeah. number two, you meet more people and you never know where your next position is going to come from. Mm. Well said. That's very well said. I want to speak. Speaking of that, I want to I want to circle back to um, 
to mindful job alignment. Mm -hmm. um, so how does your company help job seekers with really the emotional slash um, kind of like the stress side of the job search? Like how does your company do that? Well, what we do is I work with clients one on one. Um, I'm also hoping eventually down the line to be starting some support groups because I know there's a lot of different Zoom calls mm. online right now that have job search support groups and whatnot. Yeah. But what we're going to do is walk through this eight part process, the processing of the transition, the creating space in the home for reflection, mm. learning about meditation, journaling, gratitude practices, all of that. Um, just doing a check in on their diet and exercise plan, keep making sure that they're keeping that going, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that looks like for them. And then talking about the incremental income, seeing what can be done with that. And then we take a look at the values, personal values. What are your top five or six personal values and how can that be incorporated into the job search plan? And then creating a job action plan from those mm -hmm. values. Mm. And then capping it off, you have the job action plan. So it's about visualization, teaching about the law of attraction and visualization on how to make, how to be focusing on that, mm. not, not talking about the negative. We do that through affirmations. We do that through vocabulary. We do that through mm. asking the right questions, things mm. like that. Uh, keeping that going all the time and even having a vision board of sorts with your targeted position and whatnot, what does that look like? What does your lifestyle, your desired lifestyle look like? And mm -hmm. having that up and visible in the home so that you can keep bringing that in. So that's that's the process overall. And then of course we work on the tactical, um, LinkedIn analysis, resume analysis. I have associates that are resume writers mm -hmm. uh, that I can uh, refer someone to. And then the LinkedIn and then the networking and working on um, articles that they could potentially be putting on LinkedIn, that type of thing, the tactical to keep them out. Yeah. And so as people, um, as people kind of engage with you and your team and go through this process, I'm just curious about this, the action plan component of this, because I know you're, you're pretty methodical. Like when somebody walks away with that action plan, is there kind of, is there an opportunity to follow up and continue to work with you? Or how does that piece of it, this all look like oh, after they, after they have the job and they, right. you know, they've completed the goal, like, well, like what's next for them? Certainly. Well, the action plan that that I use for, in the job search part of it is really an Excel spreadsheet. Everything's reported in Excel because you can yeah. sum it up. But it really has to deal with the administrative piece of it, getting all those things handled, mm. and then the um, job you know, contacts, how many yeah. contacts you've been making in a week, that kind of a thing, interviews, and then the visioning piece of it. But yeah. what it also includes is how long did you meditate? What types of mm. gratitude practices did you do? Tracking all of the, the spiritual pieces on a regular basis to making mm. sure that the pieces that you want to put in there, that the spiritual piece doesn't fall out because you're so busy focusing on the external. Mm. So it mm. tracks a little bit of both. Yeah. And um, that's where I work with people. Yeah. Initially, I think it would be about like an eight, eight part program, but I think then we'll, we'll have follow ups and things like that after. Yeah, custom, custom tailor it to people's schedules. Oh, for sure. No, I get it. And and that to me, like one of the best things about having a coach, or in this case, someone helping them through that transition period, is is accountability is big. Like mm -hmm. when you say when you tell when you say to somebody else that you're going to um, that you're going to make X amount of contacts, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Well, I don't know what it is, but it just makes you very much more likely to do it than if you just if you didn't have that accountability piece. Right, and. Aside from the people who are working in a career who want to make a change, so their mm -hmm. week is tied up working their full time job for yeah. people in a job search, this really is a minimum 40 hour a week endeavor. Oh, okay? for sure. Yeah. And they're not having a job. I've always said is having a job to find a job. Exactly. It is. <laughs> and it's a minimum 40 hour a week uh, endeavor. Uh, I've recently been working with a coach on uh, an empowerment and motivational certification jay block mm -hmm. has written the book five steps to rapid employment i was just talking with him about that and he said you know if you follow those steps and you're out there 50 60 hours a week you're going to land pretty quickly yeah and that's even even in the face of what's going on now with our economy but mm -hmm. uh and even across all parts of the country so there is hope but you have to put the work in yeah 
Well, Diana, I mean, it's been it's been a lot of fun, first off, and I appreciate <laughs> you being a, an author in our book, and uh, and I'm excited to continue. I mean, this is just beginning where I'm yeah. excited to continue to continue to promote you, your work, your book, um, like like all of the above. It's it's so much fun. Um, that being said, I mean, if somebody wants to connect with you and they want to work with Mindful Job Alignment, I mean, what, like, how do they do that? Well, they can go to my LinkedIn profile, Diana C. Stevens. Uh, with a PH uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, also, the website is mindfuljobalignment.com, www.mindfuljobalignment.com. And uh, they can take a look at the blogs that I have up there. I've got a number of them on uh, initial job search, top 10 things to do if you're downsized, and some mm -hmm. philosophies that are Zen philosophies around transitions and whatnot. So, uh, best way to reach out to me is that way. Send me an email. Uh, message me on LinkedIn yeah. and happy to have happy to have a chat. Awesome. And do you do any type of like initial call or consultation? Like how does that piece of it work? Usually I do a 30 minute discovery call. We just talk mm -hmm. about what they're looking for. And I usually try to provide resources. If I can't uh, help them, then I'll provide resources to colleagues who can based on what they're yeah. looking for. Fantastic. Um, well, uh, like I said, Amazing put having you on the show. We'll put all your information in the show notes. Um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for the company? I'm going to really focus on content and yeah. uh, want to expand out on uh, this chapter. I want to expand out and write uh, wow. more chapters, hopefully, and uh, really put content together for blogs and, mm -hmm. and be very, very much an information resource for yeah. the subject, which is going to take more re research and everything. Yeah. So. I love that. that. That makes me smile from ear to ear because <laughs> I know that you are a researcher. I know you're, where your heart's at. I know your passion for content. And when individuals like yourself um, put in like hard work and, and create that content, like the greater good, I feel benefits from it. So so congrats on everything. And I'm, I'm excited you. to continue to get, get your message out there. Um, and speaking to the audience, so for everybody that's tuning in or listening to this on our podcast, um, if you've never been or listened to a Mission Matters episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, executives that are mission based. We have them share their message, what they're doing, and then uh, and then we get we put, we put that content out um, for the greater good. So if that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, we welcome you. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Diana, thank you so much. Until the next time we get to work together, thanks again. Thank you very much.